Hello guys, so I went to Venice for the 59th Biennale of Art as a part of British Council Culture Connects program and I'm really grateful, it was amazing. During several days we had the pleasure to discover the city but especially uh, the artists and the exhibitions selected by British Council team who do an amazing job um thanks to them by the way the first artist was Sonia Boyce so the incredible British Afro-Caribbean artist and performer she present feeling away at the British pavilion and in this exhibition she explores the potential of collaborative play as a road to innovation Boyce installation brings together video works featuring five black female musicians and this exhibition was curated by Emma Ragway, a curator that I really enjoy learning about. She presents the artist's works to us of course but she takes a long moment and after the visit she took time to answer our question. So later we took the water buses to Gandhian Pavilion, which was set up outside the official village of the Biennale, like the Kenyan Pavilion. I was quick shocked by this discrimination, I have to say. So we met the Ugandan artist Akawe Kerunen, who in the collective exhibition The Dream in Time presents a collaborative work made around raffia and banana leaf. So Akaye works with local and regional Ugandan artisans and she tried to deconstructing des uh, materials and craft and she repositioned the works to tell new story and give new meanings. It was very interesting to discuss the climate issue with Akai's work while being in Venice city paradoxically very polluted and literally placed on water. What will Venice become in few years? Later we went to meet Sowia Kiambi, artist presented at the Kenyan Pavilion. Sowia is an interdisciplinary artist and curator, incorporating photography, video, drawing, sound, sculpture and performance installation she approach addresses um, the politics the of the time the and its legacy and today. I've heard many things about you. And because I couldn't uh, go to the museum myself at the time of making this work in 2016, I, I kind of extracted that title from his letters. Um, I did a performative work in Bremen. You can find it on the video. Um, where I walked through Bremen City from the Ethnographic Museum to the train station to Wirtschaftsstraße, which is like a central part of the city, which is high tourism now and was uh, partially built by colonial funds um, into the contemporary uh, gallery space. The performance belongs in Bremen and the piece remains in the shape of a ship using also the hangman's noose knot and weighing scales and for the performative action, um, Witch Boy was hunted by both Britain and uh, Germany. And uh, sadly, his daughter was uh, succumbed, was murdered at the time he escaped. Um, and she was about 16, 17, and um, actually had the courage to curse the general who murdered her. I have to think of the time frame where there were no, um, she, you know, her first encounter with um, gunpowder weaponry. And uh, it was her energy that helped me do the performative leg of that, this piece. Um, and Germany's, um, the work is really about Germany's uh, atrocity on Namibia. And the costume that I wear in the performance is uh, worn in contemporary time in Namibia to commemorate the genocide. And maybe what's also important to mention is the Mohammed Amin Foundation. Uh, he was a photographer, photojournalist, for those of you who don't know. A lot of the photographic imagery on the piece is coming from that archive um, that he took in the 80s. Um, yeah, maybe that you can find me and we can speak a lot more uh, about the work. It's very layered. Um, but it's really my, my practice is to bring to light narratives in our histories, 
that often are overlooked or uh, um, elements that aren't spoken about and to bring them to light because our, our educational books uh, don't hold a lot of the information and I think my work is a reference to that information and that's my agenda. Thank you so much. The next day, the delegation of curators selected to participate in the program went to the Alberta White exhibition at Scotland Pavilion entitled Invest in Love. We all go through these encounters, and the work which I try to bring to the public is really built on conversations I have with friends, with family, with ancestors, to really try and make us think about the change that we want to bring and how the audience can be brought into this journey with us so that it isn't just a sense of these are my interests, these are my themes, you know. No, I want the audience to actually sit with us in the conversation. And so throughout the exhibition, it's been really very moving for me actually to see how the space has changed, you know. To also see like even the nature outside. When we first came through the door, the water was incredibly shallow. And so we ended up taking objects and moving out But it changes every time an audience comes in because they bring different questions and they bring different interpretations. And you know, the personal development program, you know, we've stayed there ever since we've been so integral because they also tell us what is being said, what's being discussed, how the audience are feeling, and they're really at the front line of these conversations. Um, what we've tried to do, Amanda, Louise, the rest of the team, the people who helped make the film, former but also well, the sculpture studio and the dovecom. It's really about providing a space for reflection, but also, you know, internal dialogue with yourself and your subject because we're a unique human and we live in a world that is very complex. Um, so I'm really grateful that all of you have come out today to really share with us. I was chosen by Anne Bell, including three artists at a concert of our Yes, and <laughs> Dr. And Le Bohan Hanyet. And so we had the pleasure to have a tour with Le Bohan today and kind of expanding a bit more into her work. So not expecting to go around everything, but really focusing on her practice, really. And not being exposed to any African literature, any African folklore. Um, but, you know, all of this childhood literature mainly coming from the Western perspective, um, specifically um, Western fairy tales. And so, you know, in school, so it's also about interrogating the education system and, um, and the sort of lack of African literature within those spaces. And so as a black child growing up in South Africa, not being exposed to um, the narrative of, um, of black African writers. And so this is my memory of growing up, reading these stories, um, also having to perform these stories because you know when I was like from when I was like five years old I think until I was like 10 um, or when I was in primary school we had to audition every year to be a Cinderella, Snow White, um, all of these characters and I never got the roles um, <laughs> and so the work is also about that it's about um, it's about all of these um, characters that I identified with as a child, but which all of it was so far from my reality growing up in the township and being in the multiracial school that I grew up in. And, um, and one of the centerpieces is the sunflower, um, because I remember that year we were, it was the year when we were having Snow White, which I love, <laughs> as one of the plays, and I got to be a sunflower. And I had no lines, obviously. <laughs> um, and so this is, you know, it's a memory of, you know, of me being being a sunflower, but it's also a memory also of the fact, it, so it's a combination of growing up and exposing myself to African literature um, right now, um, and, and then going back to the original stories, um, the original writings of the German Grimm brothers and how different they were to the Disney versions um, with the happy endings. So it's a contrast between these three, these three realities. Um, and so that's why there is, and, but also I think also with me playing with this idea of photography and using photography and the performance, um, it is also again this idea of like fantasy. So also using photography, I think it's also not 
when we think about photography from the continent or from South Africa specifically, there's a certain type of photography that is always associated with, um, and specifically photography that comes from the apartheid era, which was really important. Um, but also there is a new kind of photography, which is a space for the imaginary that um, a lot of photographers, I think, currently are also exploring, also interrogating the tool itself, and, um, and also a tool, it being a tool of surveillance, it being a tool of um, thinking about ethnographic images from, you know, from the continent and of black people versus what a camera can also possibly do um, and how one can also be in the, in the position to photograph themselves and to create a space um, for the imaginary. And so the work is very much about that and also the blur element of it is very much also about um, playing um, with the tool. And I think throughout my different bodies of work, it is very much about um, the possibilities of photography, but also interrogating um, photography as a sort of truthful medium. And, um, and performance is a huge part of my practice, and that sort of comes through in all the different bodies of work. Um, so the part of performance and, um, and dress um, is, is a huge part. And I think with, the, with what you spoke about, Cindy, which is, the, which is the work that I made around my mother, um, there's all of those themes are actually present in that work as they are in this work. Um, you know, there's the possibility of using photography to go back in time, um, the possibility of using photography also to take on a different persona, um, but also to turn the camera on yourself as a photographer, um, but also to interrogate the We couldn't finish these visits without a full stop to the French pavilions at the exhibition of Zineb Sedira. The yeah, amazing Zineb. Cinema and a lot of uh, filmmakers from Italy, France, um, a lot of sub-Saharan uh, filmmakers came also in Algeria and produced film, uh, whether it was in Cuba, whether it was, you know, wherever it was, whoever wanted to um, make an alien with Algeria, would come to Algeria, take them on and make a film. And of course the films had to be militant, they couldn't be just films about flowers or whatever, <laughs> you know, they needed to be, have a kind of, um, what we call a third world, a third world this, uh, a perspective. Uh, now we would call it the global south, of course, but at the time it was very much called the, the terme on this. Um, so yeah, so I kind of looked at the history of Italy and, uh, and, and Algeria and France and Algeria. Italy obviously because I'm here in Italy, because the Mostra of Venice also is very important in terms of giving political prices and then we understand that sometimes some prices are given as political act and it's very important. And in 1966, the Battle of Algiers by Gillo Popocorvo, which is an Algerian, fully Algerian produced film, um, directed by an Italian filmmaker, uh, won the Golden Lion in 1966. And that made a big, big uh, a political incident with France, who didn't accept that Italy would dare, you know, siding on the Algerian side. So I was interested in that kind of how cinema is used also as a political tool. Um, so I realized that a lot of Italian uh, filmmakers made films with Algeria, and I realized also that some French filmmakers made uh, films with Algeria, but not as politically engaged, perhaps, for obvious reasons, I think, because for them it was difficult to perhaps make a strong film statement anti-French. Anti so anyway, I gathered a list of films, and I decided to uh, make a project about those uh, intellectuals, those filmmakers who wanted to bring friendship to the country there decided to um, <coughs> engage politically with. Uh, so it's very much about celebration, but it's also about t trying to break this idea of what France means. You know, already by inviting me, I know you all are aware I'm the first uh, non, uh, I don't even know how to say, non-white French to be invited to, uh, to represent. Uh, so I kind of question also all those kind of diverse identity and what it meant also for, for French people to be working with Algeria, and, and I am also a legacy, a product of that colonization because my parents came and immigrated in France in the early 60s, and then I was born there, and blah blah blah, you know. Um, so, yeah, so I decided to make a, a film uh, about films to kind of celebrate the 1960s movement where there was a lot of militant Thermondist uh, cinema. I want to also talk about the Pan African Festival of 69 in Algiers, I'm sure you all heard of that. 
uh, and bring within that my own and I, I'm known to do that political and personal always always it's like almost an obsession I can't help it I always have to include either myself or my family in the project but always connected with a bigger history or bigger political so you can see that at the end the film become a film about my life it wasn't supposed to be like that but yeah ended up like that but what we decided to, or I decided to do is to make remakes of some of those films that were um, uh, done with Algeria. Um, so, for example, we've got the Battle of Algiers, of course, we've got Le Bal, the ballroom, Le Bal, Etero Scola, we've got The Stranger from uh, uh, Visconti, uh, we've got uh, Elise Ouladrevi from, from Michel Drac, and, and a few films like that. Um, so, uh, yeah, so I did remakes and then I decided also to film uh, the behind the scene and to play on this idea of the mise en abîme, hence why you've got my living room from Brixton, but you've got also the market and you see me playing with myself. And so, I mean, at the same time, I wanted to bring a lot of joy. There is a lot of sadness in the film, obviously, because I'm talking about tough, tough subjects. But for me, it was important to sort of bring, I'm somebody who likes laughing, you know, whatever, whatever the, you know, whatever the situation, you know, I just think you have to move on in some way. So I wanted to bring some joy and some music and some dancing and some humor in the project. Um, so when we so we transformed the pavilion as a film studio, that was the first thing. I really wanted to turn the, the pavilion as a film studio, which we did. We created all the set design. We shot in it. We came here in January. We shot all the film, all the actors who are all friends by the way and family members. For me again it was important to bring this element of family and friendship through friends. The, the three curators are showing in the film, they participated. Sonia Boys, as you know, she's in the film, she's a very good friend. We happen to be neighbors, so that was a wonderful like, you know, <laughs> moment. And then you've got um, uh, um, Latif Akshash, who represents Switzerland, who's also in the film and who happened to be a friend of mine. So I was making a kind of little gesture to, to this other pavilion and this friendship and this woman, you know, that I think are wonderful. Um, so yes, yeah, so we then decided to, to do the set design inside, we shot the film and we left everything like almost the uh, film was shot yesterday. Mm. And you have all the traces, the glasses of wine, the cup of coffee, all that were left like that with all the traces on the floor of where we were standing as actors. Mm. And then, and then, as I said, we did the mise en abîme, you know, um, and the, the making of. So the film, all the main part are shot in 16mm film. For me, it was important to recreate that aesthetic of the 60s. But then the making of, it's digital. So I kind of quite like mixing the analog with the digital. I thought that brought something quite, um, something extra, let's say. To the, during the opening week, we had performance, performing the tango scene that you see me dancing with Fessal uh, Bakrish, an Algerian art, uh, artist uh, in the film. And then uh, instead of doing like a, a thick glossy catalogue like everyone does here, I decided to do, and I will probably disprove a few of them, uh, free newspapers using the aesthetic of the 1960s, a bit like the Black Panthers, let's say, uh, mm. newspaper, because this is the most common one, as you know, because, <coughs> and inside, instead of having just me, me, me inside, I invited a lot of artists, academics, curators to contribute in the newspaper. So again, it's about making links with other, with what I call my, my intellectual fa family or my intellectual, you know, a group uh, or community, you know. So it's very much about celebrating also friendship, communities, political alliances, um, and artistic also uh, solidarities, I guess. Um, I think I said pretty much everything. Uh, yeah, a lot of people ask why the film, the voiceover is in English and not in French. A lot of criticism by French people about that. <laughs> uh, but I said for me it was very important to make a voiceover in uh, in English because I've got a strong French accent and because I'm playing on this idea of internationalism rather than nationalism. For me it was important to say you can be French, but live in England, speak in English with a French accent. You know, so I was kind of trying to play with all these nuances. And of course, only the French could decide me for that. But, um, <laughs> So yeah, so that hence why the language is in English with that very strong language. Thank you all for watching and see you soon.